Hey guys, Kritika here, registered dietitian, and I'm Judge Mita. And today, I'm gonna explain to you exactly how alcohol affects the human body. I say that red wine is good for you and beer has nutrients in it. If you're not gonna drink it, I think that's stupid and I'm totally gonna judge you. Let's look at the whole story and get all the facts. So whenever we drink alcohol, like anything else, it'll go down through our esophagus, it'll hit our stomach. Some of the alcohol is metabolized in our stomach by this enzyme called ADH, alcohol dehydrogenase. But then it goes through, hits our small intestine, and that's where most of the alcohol actually gets absorbed. From there, it goes to our liver, and that is where it's metabolized. That is why your liver can be so affected by very high levels of alcohol intake. So any alcohol that is not metabolized throughout this process is gonna return to the blood and then circulate to, through the body and then also go to our brain, which explains why we have slurred speech or we're not able to walk in a straight line and things like that because the alcohol is going directly to our brain. Did you know that your body sees alcohol as a toxin? So it wants to prioritize getting rid of it and getting it out of your body over anything else. So when you drink alcohol, a lot of things are put on the back burner, like fat burning and calorie burning, because the most important thing for your body is to get rid of that alcohol. So now that we know the basics of how alcohol is metabolized, let's look at some of the long-term effects of alcohol on our body. We have this thing called the lower esophageal sphincter that separates the esophagus from the stomach because the stomach has a lot of, um, it's very acidic. So we don't want all that acid coming up into our esophagus because that can damage the lining of our esophagus. However, when we drink a lot of alcohol, that sphincter gets damaged. It becomes less effective. Therefore, more stomach acid comes up into our esophagus. And this can just cause an inflamed esophagus. It can damage the lining of the esophagus. So that's especially not so great for those with heartburn or who suffer from GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. But what's interesting is that there is a little bit of individual variability in the way that we break down, metabolize, and handle alcohol. I might metabolize it differently than you or somebody else. For this reason, some people with heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux disease may not be able to tolerate alcohol at all. Long-term chronic alcohol consumption can start to cause damage to our liver. And the more alcohol you drink, the more damaged your liver can become. The reason this happens is because, remember, alcohol inhibits fatty acid oxidation. So fat starts to accumulate on the liver, causing what's called steatosis or fatty liver. And this fatty liver is actually reversible. So if you stop drinking alcohol, you can reverse it. But with chronic heavy alcohol intake over a long period of time, the liver can become very inflamed and increase our risk for cirrhosis. And cirrhosis is not reversible. If you're getting any value at all from this video right now, do me a favor and hit that like button for me. Hangover symptoms can be as mild as just having a headache, but can also be as extreme as a rapid heartbeat, depression, anxiety, irritability, vomiting. But what actually causes this? One thing that causes it is dehydration because alcohol is a diuretic and it pushes water out of your body, which causes an imbalance of electrolytes in our body. And if during a hangover we are vomiting or having diarrhea or um, having excessive sweating, that's gonna further intensify these symptoms of a hangover because it's increasing our dehydration. But another thing that can cause hangover are compounds in alcohol called congeners. And these compounds are found more in dark liquors like tequila, brandy, bourbon, and red wine. Combining different alcoholic beverages that contain different levels of congeners is gonna cause more of a hangover. And as far as a hangover cure, there are a lot of myths out there like drinking more alcohol or eating a greasy burger. But drinking more alcohol is only gonna prolong the recovery time. Having some carbohydrate and having some food might be really important if you can stomach it because it's going to help bring your blood sugar back up. Since during a hangover, insulin is really high, our blood sugar drops, and that's another reason that we might experience these hangover symptoms like fatigue and weakness because our blood sugar is really low. You okay over there, Judge Mita? I'm never drinking again. And beer has nutrients in it. It is true that beer technically does contain nutrients. See, I told you I was right, beer has nutrients. 
beer contains a little bit of calcium, a little bit of potassium, some selenium, some folate, and very small amounts of vitamin B6 and B12. But of course, we don't want to rely on beer and alcohol to give us nutrients because when we drink lots of alcohol, it can actually decrease our absorption of certain vitamins and minerals like folate. So even though beer contains folate, we might not be absorbing all of that folate. So let's get into this more and talk more about how alcohol can actually inhibit the absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. High alcohol intake can definitely decrease our absorption of certain vitamins and minerals because all this alcohol damages the lining of our stomach and alcohol also damages uh, certain digestive enzymes that are involved in helping absorb these nutrients. Alcohol also blocks the absorption of folate. And this is one reason why a heavy alcohol intake is associated with a increased risk of breast cancer, colon cancer, and other cancers. Too much alcohol can also influence our bone health because it decreases decreases our absorption of vitamin D and other fat soluble vitamins. Severe alcoholics can also develop what's called wernicke korkasoff syndrome. And this is as a result of a severe thiamine deficiency or vitamin B1. But because thiamine or vitamin B1 has a role in our brain function, a deficiency of this essential vitamin can cause a lot of issues with our brain. Loss of memory, confusion, it's really serious. And the reason this happens is either because of a reduced intake of thiamine in severe alcoholics, because if you're drinking so much alcohol, where's the room for eating adequately and getting adequate nutrition? And secondly, because chronic alcohol use damages the lining of the small intestine, it inhibits the absorption of thiamine. But like, isn't red wine good for us or something? Well, Judge Mita, you might actually be right about that. Red wine contains polyphenol and beer also contains similar levels of these uh, polyphenol compounds, but in much lower amounts. But something to note is that the amount of polyphenols in beer and wine and alcohol in general is very small. So you can actually get more polyphenols from eating berries or apples. And when I was doing research for this video, I was very surprised to learn that light to moderate drinking in middle age and older adults does have benefits, heart health benefits. And it's not necessarily because of the wine, because this benefit has been repeated in uh, different types of alcohol, less in liquor, but more in like wine or beer. But again, this is only for light to moderate drinking. Binge drinking, like having four or more drinks in one night is not going to have any benefits or be good for your health, the, the risk there outweighs the benefits. But these benefits are also largely based on observational studies. So while we don't wanna just ignore it just because it's an observational study, if you drink alcohol and you have a lower risk of heart disease, it's not necessarily the alcohol that is causing the lower risk of heart disease in these studies. And this is still a pretty controversial topic and because there's a lot of conflicting studies in the research and most of the benefit, like I said, we see in middle age and older adults, like above 40. So if you have a question about your alcohol intake, you just call up your doc and have an honest conversation with your doctor about drinking alcohol and if it's okay for you. Because alcohol can also interact with certain medications and that might be a whole another story, but just talk to your doctor. All right, Judge Mina, we're gonna be playing a game of true or false. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. First question, true or false? A shot of whiskey contains more alcohol than a can of beer. False. That is correct. It is false. They are exactly the same amount of alcohol. Did you know that all of these drinks have about the same amount of alcohol? And this is what is equal to one standard drink. But depending on what you order at the bar, you might be getting more than one standard drink. A 12 ounce glass of beer is considered one drink. If you get 16 ounces, that's one and one third drinks. All right, next question. Women feel the effects of alcohol sooner than men. Mm. True. That is correct. That is true. Women have less of the enzyme ADH or alcohol dehydrogenase. Because women have less of it, we tend to feel the effects of alcohol much sooner. Next question, true or false? Drinking alcohol increases your risk of hypertension or high blood pressure. True. Ooh, that is correct. <laughs> Although the mechanism of how exactly this happens is not very clear, several days of drinking can raise your blood pressure. Next 
question. Drinking alcohol improves your sleep. False. Look at you, you go girl. This study looked at the effects of alcohol on men and women's sleep. And what they found was that very low amounts of alcohol decreased sleep quality by about 9%. And high amounts of alcohol, which was more than two drinks a day for men and more than one for women, decreased sleep quality by 39%. So although we may fall asleep faster, the quality of our sleep is not as good. All right, Judge Mita, this is the last question. Alcohol poisoning can result in permanent brain damage. True. Severe vomiting and dehydration, seizures, permanent brain damage, and even death can all happen if you really overdo it on the alcohol. That one is sad. The first tip is to track how much you're drinking. Track the days that you're drinking because awareness is the first step to change. You might notice, for example, that you tend to drink Tuesday nights when you're watching Bachelorette, or is it Monday nights? Monday nights when you're watching Bachelorette, or you drink every Friday in the middle of the week after work. So you can identify if you have a habit of drinking for a particular occasion or for a particular day. Then what you can do is replace one to two of those days or drink with something else like a LaCroix or Zevia. I love Zevia. I personally love the orange flavor. It tastes like orange soda. There's no added sugars. It's sweetened with stevia. And if you're concerned about stevia or the ingredients on here, is that healthy? What about maltodextrin? I actually have a video all about that you can check out right here. If you're wondering about motivation and how to motivate yourself to make these healthier habits, check out this video.